what's up? Let's talk about the money. So that's always a big question. How much do social workers get paid? We're gonna talk about that. What kind of jobs are there in social work? We're gonna talk about that. What kind of licensure do you need? We're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about so much. And what do I do? How do I do it? And do I get paid? And how do you get paid well? Those are always the questions. And people try to stare you away and say, you don't wanna be a social worker, you don't make any money. I'm gonna tell you, honey boo boo, how you can make some money. So if you wanna find out, let's go. Social worker is anybody who assists people with, or groups of people um, with challenges in their life. Um, so if you're oppressed, dealing with substance use, having issues with your family, children, if you need counseling, if you're suicidal, or if you're just struggling with mental health. And there's a lot of other different types of social workers as well. So why do people get into social work? People get into social work for a lot of different reasons. If they've struggled with something, if they want to be an advocate for someone, if they were ever in foster care, if they ever had a trauma, or sometimes people just really enjoy helping people and assisting people with bettering their lives or their families. Um, so what kind of jobs are there in social work? There's so many different types of jobs in social work. Um, there's policy writers to make programs better. There's counselors, there's different types of counselors. There's crisis intervention counselors. I'll get more into that deep later. Um, there's marriage counselors, there's just family counselors, there's individual therapists, people who specialize in autism, children, adolescents, and elderly adults. Um, there's hospice social workers and counselors that help deal, help families deal with bereavement and grief um, because there's no great process for grief. You just have to let it go through the different emotions. So there's immigration social workers, there's even travel social workers that go from place to place, assisting different countries, states, or even continents, um, like if you wanted to work in an orphanage in Tanzania, for example, because that's something that I ended up doing over the summer. Um, not this summer because of COVID, but uh, the summer a while ago. Um, there, you can go to England, you can go wherever you want and just assist people. For Katrina, um, just to help in the dome with different family members and children, um, just sitting there playing with them. Doesn't have to go into big details. Um, doesn't have to go into depth as long as they're feeling like they could be normal in a scary situation because that was very traumatic for people who live there also workers that never have experienced anything like that in the past work and job and family services or children and family services if people are struggling with social workers help the families become better parents and help them improve what they were struggling with in the first place is kind of underestimated children's services only that they do is remove people's children that is not the case the main goal is to help better the families and keep them together. Reunification is always the goal. And then there's hospital social workers, there's state social workers, people work for the government, there's VA social workers, um, there's suicide specialist social workers. If you're ever thinking about suicide, there is a number to call and I'm gonna get right here. Make sure you take it down because you never know if somebody you know is struggling with suicide. Take it down, save it on your phone because you never know when you can save a life. If somebody ever is talking, thinking, you even talking about it, thinking about it, or even if you have a suspicion, you can just give them their number and say, hey, if you ever want to talk to somebody, no strings attached, just pick up the phone and call. You can even text it. Um, if you see something, say something. If you have a feeling, say something. If you just give them a number, it doesn't hurt. If it's they want to delete it, that's fine, or just be a support for them. You don't have to be a social worker just to be a support for somebody. People who go into social work should care. They should adamantly, deep down, care what they're doing because that makes a difference. That makes people help without burnout. Burnout means like you get sick of the job and you just decide to leave and, you know, sometimes change careers or even go to a different job. Um, it helps your drive. It helps you continue working hard for that family or hard for that individual or advocating for your patient saying this is what this patient needs. If you don't care, don't do it because these people, you meet them at their most vulnerable times, the, the worst days of their lives, even as people who are like suicidal. You could be meeting them for the first time and whatever you say to them, that, can make, that one encounter could make the difference in somebody's life, literally. So now I'm about to go over what different type of licensures you need to be a social worker, um, different jobs that I've done as social work and what I currently do now, and then how much do you get paid? So that's always a big question. And that can also be a determinant for somebody who is going to, thinking of going into social work. The different licensures depends on what kind of degree you hold. So if you're a bachelor's prepared one or a master's prepared one, um, 
I carry a licensure in Ohio as well as Massachusetts. In Ohio, if you have a bachelor's degree, you um, can have a LSW. Also, if you are a master's prepared social worker, you can carry LSW or after two years of supervision, um, you can get LISW, which is independent, means you can individually, independently bill somebody's insurance. LSW, you're working under somebody else. Um, and you can't individually bill someone's insurance. That's really, and you can't carry your own practice. Those are really the main differences. And also some, some jobs require you to have a LISW. Um, LSW is a licensed social worker. LISW is a licensed independent social worker. In Massachusetts, you have a LCSW, which is a licensed clinical social worker. Also a LCISW, licensed clinical independent social worker. Um, both, either you have to be master's prepared. However, the difference is you can be a supervisor with some of those jobs. You can still be a supervisor with LCSW, but a lot of supervisor jobs want you to have, carry LI or get the LI within a couple years of hire. So in Ohio, as an LSW, I worked for Children's Services. I worked in a residential treatment program for youth. Um, so the youngest child that I had was, I think, seven years old, and the oldest child that I worked with was 17 there. Um, they're removed from their home for different reasons. You had to have a mental health diagnosis to be there and be unsafe while being in the community. So if you were highly suicidal, if you mutilated your body, if you had eating disorders, if you were struggling with substance use, you would go to that program to get um, treatment and you did stay there overnight. Um, in Ohio, I also worked in Children Family Services. I worked in the START Department, which specifically targets families who the mothers either, either tested positive or the baby tested positive for any type of substance while they were pregnant or when they delivered. Um, that includes marijuana, alcohol, illicit substances like heroin, cocaine, molly, meth. It should be people who aren't addicted to substances feel like, you know, that child should be taken away automatically. Well, one, removing a child is traumatizing to the parent, also traumatizing to the children. Why disrupt somebody's placement if we can just make their household better? Even if you're like a child was being abused physically by their parent, they don't love their parent any less. They might be scared of them, but they still love their parent. They want the abuse to stop, but they still want to be in their home. The main goal is child safety and mitigate the risk of traumatizing people even more, especially children. So in Massachusetts, I work in a hospital. Where I carry my LCSW, so I am master's prepared. Um, I work in the emergency department um, and I do crisis intervention. I'm a crisis intervention specialist, that's my title. So if you are dealing with a trauma, if you're acutely psychotic, if you are suicidal, if you're dealing with self-harm, mutilation, even if you just want to talk, a breakup, anybody who's struggling with substance use, that is the place to come because we can assist with getting you detoxes, residential programs, inpatient levels of care if you need that stabilization to return back to the community, um, get your mental health under control, meet with counselors, hook you up with a team, um, do day programs, partial programs, um, community-based help bring families together, anything to make the trauma or your suicidality any less. That's what I specialize in. I meet with you at your worst day or your family's worst day. If you had a death, you needed, you felt like you had no control, go to the hospital because they have people trained to just talk to you. Sometimes just talking is the pill. That's the pill you need. It's just talk. Um, and some people, you know, require a little more assistance, meaning medication assistance. Um, and then some people feel like going to therapy or grief counseling, that would be beneficial as well. But we are the stopping ground to assist with that because sometimes you don't know where to go and you feel lost and feeling lost can feel really overwhelming and that's what we're here for is to help link you network you to different places that you need to go um, to help you know get your life back to where it was prior to whatever situation brought you there in the first place and no 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 I've never been assaulted by a patient here's the way to make the money the cash the dough think everybody wants to know and talk about is yes oh yeah I'm this I'm that I make this I make that you're a social worker you don't make any money honey boo boo I make money I make good money 
And if you just want that money for a shopping spree, buy a house, buy a new car, you can do it as a social worker and here's how. Bias for social workers is you don't make any money, but you make 30 grand a year, 40 grand a year, depending on what job you do. So at, at the residential program, I made about 20 grand. At the residential, I was part-time, so that's why I only made 20 grand. At children's services, I made about 40 grand. Why? Why do you make that? Here's why. So if you are a sal salaried employee, you're, you're handcuffed to that money. No matter if you're working overtime, no matter if you come in or you don't, you still make that same paycheck every single week. The same one. Nothing's changed. So at Children's Services, you can get overtime, you can get comp time. Comp time is if you worked overtime over your 40 hours. Comp time, you can use that to take a vacation. If you wanted to just use time to yourself, you can use comp time. So every Saturday, I would have to do a prison visit for one of my moms. I would bring the baby to the prison. So every other week, I would either do comp time or I would do payout, means get overtime. Just because I wanted time to myself, I wanted to go on vacations. I wanted to just, you know, if I don't feel like coming in, I'm not gonna come in, I'm just gonna use my time. And you don't get flooded for that. Or if I feel like I wanna do a project, I'm gonna get the overtime. Or wanna catch up on bills, I would get do the overtime because, you know, you would get double. So, you know, that was my theory. Either use time or get the come time. And I would switch it off every week or, like I said, if I wanted to take a big vacation, I would use that because that's, you know, three hours of my day. So, at this job, I'm not a salaried employee. I make hourly pay. So, if I wanted to pick up overtime, I'd pick up overtime. No issues because they're always short clinicians, crisis intervention specialists. So, I would pick up. On holidays, I would pick up. I would work a double because if you work a double, you can make almost a thousand dollars a day. So. Here's another nice thing. I work night shift. Yeah, a lot of people say they can't work night shift, but here's the best part. You can either pick up another job, and that's what I did. So let's say you make $1,000 on working a double on a holiday, because you get paid double. You also get paid overtime for working the holiday. And night shift, you get $4 extra pay, because a lot of people don't want night shift, so they want to keep their night employees. So one week, we wanted to go on a really nice vacation. So I ended up picking up two weeks in a row. I worked, I think 12 days, but it was paid for because I was able to make that money. Last year, I made almost 80 grand at that job. 80 grand. Who says social workers can't make money? Also the nice thing, at the hospital, full time is 32 hours. So I work four eight hour shifts. That's my 32 hours. Like I said, if I wanted to pick up extra, I would pick up extra. But I would still have that time for my family, my children, because no one even missed me that I was gone. I mean, my husband would miss me, but you know, everybody's sleeping. That's the nice thing, no one misses you. So then, like I said, I also picked up a second job. And you know, that's not ideal for some people working two full-time jobs, but it worked for my family. And like I said, I only did it for eight months. Um, and so if you're single, if you feel like you have or if you feel like you have the time to work two jobs, and if you worked a part-time job, like I said, night shift, you don't really realize how fast it goes. Um, so if you feel like you can work two jobs, then you know, try to do that. Because I made, this year, I made a hundred grand. A hundred grand. You know how much shopping sprees I can do? But yeah, I made a hundred grand. Working two jobs. Yeah, it sounds bad, but even if you do it for a year, it goes by quick. And once you have all that money in your bank account, you know, you can do whatever you want. So the main tip, get one that pays hourly. Hourly is where it's at. Also, night shift, you do make a little more money. Also, do what you love. Never let somebody steer you away. If you're really thinking about going to social work, go into social work. It's worth it. And like I said, the bias is there, but there are ways to make money. Here's just a little breakdown. I screenshot this prior to the year being over. So hopefully you like that video. If you have any questions, comments, leave them down below. I'll make sure that I answer them. Remember, you can do it. You can make money. Just be motivated. That said, leave a comment, like, subscribe. See you in my next video.